let's start with the development of the sweat gland two things you should know is that there are two types of sweat glands in the body we have eucrine and in addition to eucrine we have apocrine again this is something you'd probably have done to an extent in histology and that these sweat glands they form in the skin over most parts of the body and they begin as buds from the germinative layer of the epidermis so their primordium are basically cellular buds of the basal layer of the epidermis and these buds they grow into the um dermis right extend into the dermis and their end coils to form the secretory part of the gland so i i won't draw the top of this but this is like just you know take my word that this is the germinative layer so we have the formation of a bud like this is a bud right and this is the dermis portion because this is the basal layer which is at the junction and this bud grows into the dermis how would it do that It'd be basically like this you know it's going into the growing into the dermis because just beneath the basal layer we have the dermis where else would it grow if it's a down growth and then what happens is that the ends coil to form the secretory part of the gland what do we mean by that it's continuing to elongate right grow but like the end kind of coil starts to coil this is just the initial part of it the coiling will get much more extreme and it's a bit difficult to show that there will be a lot of coiling and the coil part will become the secretory portion Now the smooth muscle glands that are the smooth muscle cells are associated with the glands they will also develop from the epidermal part so this epidermal blood will also lead to smooth muscle cells which are associated with the gland get it this is for the eucrine part which is more common and as i've said these are found throughout most of the body they develop as cellular buds from the epidermis that grow into the underlying mesenchyme and as the buds elongate elongate their ends coil to form the secretory parts of the gland and the epithelial attachment of the developing glands to the epidermis form the primordia of the sweat ducts because there is an attachment over there no? and the central cells of these duct, ducts because initially when we are talking about a bud this would be completely filled with cells right initially what, what happens is that the central cells of these ducts they degenerate by apoptosis and they form a lumina which is basically when we say lumina we mean a canal and opening kind of like this because there would be cells like this like there wouldn't be any cells in the central portion we would have a lumina or canals of tubular eucrine glands now if you can remember this word it would be nice now the peripheral cells these are the peripheral cells on the secretory parts of the glands they differentiate into myoepithelial and secretory cells now don't make the mistake of thinking that the myoepithelial cells might be from the surrounding dermis as it does happen in certain muscular comp components of the skin these myoepithelial cells they differentiate from the epidermal part important myoepithelial cells also differentiate from the bud
and these are sort of specialized smooth muscles ex assist in expelling sweat from the glands and these begin to function these eccrine glands begin to function soon after birth now if you talk about the other type that is the apocrine they develop anywhere there is body hair anywhere there is body hair Now what does that mean even? So that includes the face, the axilla, and the pubic regions. The, their development starts during puberty and they arise from the same epidermal parts that produce hair follicles. So this is important. You need to know that these apocrine sweat glands, they don't have an independent part. And because as we've already mentioned that they're found anywhere there's body hair and the reason for that is that the same cellular part that produce leads to the formation of a hair bulb also leads simultaneously to the formation of an apocrine sweat gland so these sweat glands they open into hair follicles instead of the skin that does make sense so this is a very important concept they will and can ask you now Iva. Where do the apocrine sweat glands open up? How does how do they differ from their eccrine counterparts? While well, these start working at birth, these develop at puberty. Independent cellular birds, because they're found only in areas where there is hair, it makes sense. And because they develop from this common intercellular bird, it makes sense that they wouldn't empty onto the skin surface but rather onto the hair follicle, a bit like sebaceous glands do. The confinement of their distribution is sort of important. And these develop from down growths of the stratum germinativum of the epidermis. As a result, the ducts of these glands do not open onto the skin surface as to eccrine sweat glands, but into the canals of the hair follicle superficial to the entry of the sebaceous gland. So before, kind of like after it, superficial would mean after it. And the secretion of these glands is influenced by hormones and does not begin until puberty. And what do the sweat produce? Contain lipid, protein, etc. And why are the classes apocrine? Because a portion of the secretory cells is shed and incorporated into the secretion. I'm hoping I got most of what I wanted into you, you're getting what I'm saying. Let me, in my last one, I'll be doing mammary glands.